Uh, hello guys, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. So today we are going to learn the lesson six six point two research and uh, troubleshooting. So in this lesson, uh, we will attempt to aid uh whatever. I I don't want to uh read that. Let's just follow the videos. In this lesson, you'll attempt to add a speedometer and RPM display for your vehicle in Prototype One, and in doing so you'll learn the process of doing online research when trying to implement new features and troubleshoot bugs in your project. As you'll find out, adding a new feature is very rarely as simple as it initially seemed. You inevitably run into unexpected complications and errors that usually require a little online research. So in this lesson, we'll learn how to do some online research so that we can do it on our own for our project. Now, one thing that'll set our driving game apart from our driving simulator by adding something like a speedometer to be able to actually track the speed of our vehicle, much like you would see in a car itself. If we're going to implement a speedometer, the first thing we have to do is make the vehicle accelerate and decelerate more like a real car, which uses forces as opposed to the translate. Because of the fact that translate will actually move our vehicle at a constant speed, we'll need to use forces and rigid bodies on our vehicle to make it move at different speeds by applying different forces onto the vehicle to make it speed up and slow down. So open up your Prototype 1 project, and when Prototype 1 is open, we're going to make a backup of our project because we're going to change some of our code. So on the top left of Unity, go to the Assets dropdown and Export Package. Now I'm going to export this package directly to my Create with Code folder. So I'll call this Prototype 1. Please. Now make sure to save. Now that we've saved our Prototype 1, if you remember, on our player object, we have this player controller script, which is how we actually move our vehicle through the scene using that translate method. So I need to actually go into my scripts folder and open up player controller. Now in my player controller script, I have the transform.translate method where I move the vehicle, but I need to use physics and forces to do so instead of using transform.trans. So I'm actually going to create a new variable for our rigid body. And now I need to actually assign that rigid body when our game starts. So now in our start method, our player RB variable is set to the rigid body component that we have on our actual vehicle. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to actually comment out the speed because I'm going to create a different variable for applying the actual force. So in case I want to use speed and I want to use this translate method, I'll comment both of those lines out. So instead of speed, I'll make a private float called horsepower and we'll set that to zero for now. So I actually want to interact with this variable. I'm going to add that serialize field attribute. So now I can actually play around with this variable in Unity, even though it's private. And then in my update method, I'm going to use that rigid body. I'm going to apply a force using the add force method. We want to apply that force in the forward direction. We don't actually need to use time.delta time since we're applying forces instead of translating something. I'll multiply it by the horsepower that we have, and then we need to actually control that force, so we'll use vertical in. So this line of code isn't entirely different from our original line. Some of our past projects we were using add forces to move things, so now is a good opportunity to try using add force again. So I make sure I save. Now in Unity, you can see that my player controller script has updated on the inspector. So I'll select that player and horsepower is set to zero. So I'll, what I'll actually do is I'm gonna test out this variable. So I'm gonna enter play mode and we know zero is not gonna move it at all. So let's try like 10 since we had about like 20 before. So we're not really moving. Turn still. See, what if I just like, if we put it to 100, does it move anywhere? No? Okay, maybe we need more force. Thousand, still nothing. Go even more, 10,000. Very little move. Okay, uh, let's just do, let's say 20,000. Oh, there you go. So our vehicle moves forward, but doesn't actually move in the direction that we turn it in. Let me make sure that I actually set this variable now that I'm out of play mode. And let's try that again, see what happens. Yeah, so the vehicle doesn't move in the right direction at all. It's just always moving forward, which could look really cool if you're making like a drifting game, but we still want to be able to turn that vehicle. So do wrong. To help conceptualize the problem here, so you can see right now we have the arrows for that move tool. And right now our move tool is actually locked into global cord. So we can use this toggle on the top left between global and local. So now local should actually turn as we turn the vehicle. So with global 
coordinates set up on our rotation tool. If I actually rotate this vehicle left to right, you can see that it actually is always still pointing down the road. If I switch to local coordinates, you can actually see as I rotate this vehicle, now the arrow pointing wherever the vehicle. So we actually need to figure out how we can apply forces according to our local. Luckily, the internet is our good friend here. So in Google, I actually typed in Unity, Add Force, and Local Space. And you can see all of these different things popped up. There's actually some Unity answers questions here. This is actually our forum where users go to ask questions and then other users will actually answer it for them. And then we also have the scripting API. This is actually the official Unity documentation. You can see here we have that Add Force method we know that doesn't work so let's see we click into the top most the question here says add force in local space and the user asked how do you change an add force from global to local the top reply from this user says to add relative force instead of add we were using add force before but i don't know what this add relative force so you can see that the user was trying to point us in the right direction using add relative force. Down in the suggestions for the scripting API, add relative force is actually one of the options that we can select as a result. Or ask Google once again, so unity add relative force. So this actually brings up that result for our documentation. So you can see in our official documentation, the description tells us that it adds a force to the rigid body relative to its coordinate system. So it actually is using that local coordinate. So if I go to my player controller script, if I go down to my update method, if I just add the word relative to add force, I can save and then I head back into Unity and I test my game out in play mode. See, as I turn, I should be moving in the direction the vehicle's pointing. So see that works. Vehicle is doing some weird things at the moment. That's fine. That in a bit. Oh, we just flipped over. But on the upside, our vehicle isn't just driving straight down the road as I turn. So using a little bit of searching on the internet and finding the add relative force method, I was able to fix the problem that I had. So what you're gonna do is you're going to open up prototype one in the top left of Unity, if you select the Assets menu option, go down to Export Package. You're going to export a new package to save as a backup for your prototype one, since we're going to change it. You're then going to open up your player controller script. In your player controller script, you can comment out the variable for your speed, and you can comment out the line where we are moving the vehicle using transform.translate. I added a new variable for our horsepower that will be applied as a force. I used that new attribute serialize field so that I can actually change this value in Unity. I needed to make a new variable for our rigid body, and then I needed to assign that rigid body in our start method using get component to find the rigid body of our current object. And then in our update method, instead of using transform.translate, I used player rigid body dot add relative force to move it in the forward direction times the actual force that we're applying and then multiplied that by our actual input so we could control our vehicle again using our arrow. So then when you test out your game in Unity by entering play mode, you can move the vehicle down the road and as you turn it, it will actually start moving in the direction it's pointing. Now it's your turn. Alright, as you know, this is our game. First, I'm gonna do a backup. Backup of version 1. Then hit the save button. Yeah, after that, we could do some changes. First, we go to the... We go to the player controller script. In here, uh, uh, before this video, we have used the transform. But for now, we're going to use the rigid body. So, let's do this. Let's create a public variable. Floats. Or maybe we do not need that. We need a parrots. Rigid body. Let's give it uh, player. Give it land. Player. Rigid body. For this body it should be um get a components of uh, rigid body. Okay. Yeah. After that, uh, whenever we want to do that kind of transformation, let's say we need to do uh do something about it. I could say player rigid body that add the uh, add the relative force where I could give it the the the, the land uh, or the value of the force that would be vector three dot forward plus maybe it's not about plus it's about uh mul multiplication uh we need to import uh times the inputs that we have then after that uh, let's say we need to time a speed. Or kind of things like that. I'll just create a public variable. Uh, let, uh, let's say it's uh, horse power or uh, just a power. That, that could be fine. Um, so let's add the first set it to one ten 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 hundred. 
and of course it, it should be a float value okay after that uh, we add it here we say power here okay now if we play this game you will see this tank won't move then let's add a zero be, uh, below the uh, as a power uh, we add one to it or we, we add a zero after that now let's run this game again if now it's still not working kind of weird Find another zero to it. But now, as you can see, uh, we got our tank moving, but uh, in weird, in weird direction. Now let's run it again. As you can see, uh, this is our tank, but uh, it's uh, it's going crazy. Actually, I knew how to solve it. How to solve this problem? We could go to the uh, we could go to the rigid body, and there's a restraints. We could uh, let's say f uh, raise some rotations. That's that's first the freezing all. Then when we run this uh, vehicle, the vehicle uh, won't rotate like crazy. That's kind of a solution that I I come up with my mind. So let's go to the next one since this one we have already done. Now that we've implemented real physics on the vehicles, very easy to overturn. We need to figure out a way to make our vehicles safer to drive. If I test out my game again, as I drive my vehicle down the road, at some point it just kind of flips over, and uh, that definitely isn't great. Oh, it flipped back. That's cool. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, uh, full rotation. Cool. Land back on the ground. So, while this looks kind of cool, this is not what we're trying to accomplish at all. How do we fix this problem? We'll head back to the internet and see if anybody has any solutions for us. So, I actually googled Unity prevent car from flipping. There's a couple of things that pop up. There's some YouTube videos, there's Unity Answers posts. I'm just going to check out this first link here. This actually brings me to the forum on our website. So how to prevent the car from problems with the car I'm creating. I have a car that has a rigid body, four wheels, wheel grid, lower the center of gravity. Another recommendation. So that first one was kind of helpful. Mention them about wheel colliders. Let's see what the second option says. So car keeps slipping over. Handling is terrible. Okay. Go through a corner, the car flips over. What V are you using? Are you using wheel collider? Wheel colliders mentioned again. Information note of center of mass. Well, let's see. So this person is recommending wheel colliders and center of mass, and they provided a link. Take a look at center of mass first and see what this does since it's already linked. Vector three center of mass center of mass relative transform don't set the center of mass it will be calculated automatically all of the collider so maybe we can use the center of mass i assume maybe the rigid body is setting our center of mass a little bit higher than the actual center of our vehicle so we can try and change that a little example here that center of mass way try to play around with that so center of mass and then it mentioned wheel colliders so Actually, on the documentation, I can also just search what I'm looking for. So if I go to the top right, there's this search scripting option here. Wheel searching. Oh, okay. Look at that. Second option, wheel collider. A special collider for vehicle wheels. Pretty useful. The so wheel colliders are used to model vehicle wheels. Well, that will probably help a lot. So let's see what happens first. So we have these wheels. So if I select the vehicle, I can actually select each individual wheel. You can actually see they're all children object of our player. So I'll select this first wheel, and I'm going to disable this mesh collider by unchecking that box. And so now there's no collider on this wheel. Let's see if I put it back. So that looks to be a pretty large problem. So our wheels are not perfectly circle, so they have these edges on. So our wheel will actually roll onto one of these edges, and these edges might actually catch onto the ground here. So that is probably causing our vehicle to flip over. So I'll disable this mesh collider and I'll add a component and look for a wheel collider. Oh, that. So we do have a component called a wheel collider. So what if I, okay. So it, it's like kind of a little too large for what we're looking for. So let's see, change the radius a bit large, maybe more. Okay, for now, still off center. So that's a problem. So we'll actually just change the Y values on the center. Drag it up a little bit. So that'd be a little smaller. So I'm gonna change this value manually. So I'll type 0.4, so a little high, 0.39 will be smaller, 1.4, a little bit off, we wipe a little bit, 1.5, good, close to the wheel itself, cool, so we'll collapse this mesh collider, we're not using it anyway, we have this wheel collider on, I'm actually just going to apply that wheel collider onto all of our wheels, so I select second wheel, and then I shift and left click on the last wheel, now all of our wheels, I can disable the mesh collider, add a component, find that wheel collider again, I believe our values were 0.39 on radius, and 
0.15 on send. I'll just make sure that's correct. Cool. So first wheel, 0 0.39, 0 0.15, 9, 0.15. Cool. So let's see what happens now that we have our new wheel collider. That. So our vehicle doesn't stutter anymore. It's going very fast. And we just toppled over. Kind of works. The vehicle does a little bit of a swimming motion. And it's very easy. Over. But at least now we have the movement down. But we want to definitely change how easy it can flip. Now that flipping problem is actually probably caused by that center of mass issue that we were having. And we looked up in the scripting API in our documentation. It had some tips about center of mass. So if we head back to the internet and I just looked up Unity, how to lower vehicle center of mass. So we have that link to the documentation that we had before. There's also this Unity answers problem here. So what if I want... So it says here they're making a grip. Driving is working, but whenever they turn hard left or right, it just starts going on two wheels. They don't know if it's the center of mass. Wheel colliders are wheel colliders here that they've actually posted a snippet of their center of mass, Tom stands for. So this person recommends the easiest way to do this, add a child empty object called center of mass. And in your script, set the empty objects local position and we can adjustable and grip that mass can be reused Use that okay. so the thing they recommend to do is actually create a center of mass object as a child of this player vehicle so i'm going to right click on player and we're going to create an empty and i'll name this game object center of mass now we have this empty game object where we can actually control the center of mass now in my player controller script is where i'll actually need to set that center of mass so I'll open that up. So we already have the player's rigid body. And according to that person's suggestion, you can actually just get the center of mass. So when I start my game, if I get the player rigid body, oh. center of mass, reset center of mass. So now I can actually get the center of mass of my rigid body. And I actually want to set this to center of mass. I think actually I'll need to get that game object first so this. I need to actually assign this in unity I can actually use serialize field and in fact I don't need to even use the word private because all of our variables are private by default cool thing with serialize field is now I can actually set a reference for that center of mass game object without using public game object all this center of mass now we have that game object that we're making so we need to get the center of masses actual position transform position so now what's happening is we're actually setting the rigid body's center of mass to the position of the center of mass object that we made in our game in unity one of the last things I need to do is if I select that player object, you can see center of mass. There's no game object reference. I actually take the child game object, drop it onto the player. Now if I test this out, see, so now our center of mass should be lower. Now our speed work like change or double it again. Now we press play, really move. Maybe there's a problem with the actual center of mass. See, the center of mass is in the ground. That doesn't go. So let's move it to like the bottom of the car, really where the center of a vehicle's mass would be. Now if we press play, okay, little forward heavy. Move that up a little bit and we'll move back. There you go. That is a lot of force we're applying. Oh, look at that, but we don't flip over. That's cool. So originally, in fact, if I select the player our center of mass was somewhere around here actually where these arrows are coming from so using this center of mass game object i moved it a little to the back and a little bit down to make it a bit more accurate as to where the center of mass would be now in our player we were still moving too fast what if i set this back to twenty thousand? test this so it doesn't really work Thirty thousand. that way we're not accelerating very fast that's 40 000 Move. there you go so it looks like there's a small issue where the vehicle duck vehicle so what's probably happening is the wheels are actually clipping into the ground so that's where it duck so if i play the vehicle because of gravity will fall to the ground there you go now it's much smoother to drive around and there you go we're flying off so still too much force applied let's just bring it back down to 20,000 again and still not out. somewhere between 20,000 and 30,000 is probably a good number 25,000 for now see if that works that looks do a few things like we could actually change the mass of our vehicle to be even more instead of 1,000 we set it to 2,000 so that flip should definitely have way less actually applied too much mass so the force is enough to move it so you can change a couple of different things, change the mass, you can change the horsepower, and you can change the actual location of mass. That will make it easier to move your vehicle. Play around with those different variables. So what you're going to do is on your vehicle, you're going to select all of the different wheels, disable those mesh colliders, add a new component for the wheel collider, make sure that radius lines up with those wheels as best as possible, and then maybe move the center so that it's actually the center of the wheel. You can then create a new empty game object called center of mass make sure you make it as a child game object player so you right click on the player game object in the hierarchy go down to create empty then it will create the center of mass right at the center of the vehicle you head into your development environment you can then create a new variable 
called center of mass. That's the game object that we made and we'll use serialized field so we can actually assign it. So in our player controller script, we need to add that center of mass by getting that game object. We can use serialized fields so that we can actually get the reference of this center of mass in our inspector. Then we need to actually assign the rigid body center of mass to the same position as the center of mass game object we made so that in unity when we select our player game object in the player controller script the center of mass reference pops up we can just click and drag the center of mass game object we made on of mass and then we can play around with the horsepower the mass and the actual position of the center of mass to see how our view one thing to take note of while we're using center of mass and we're using these wheel colliders, this is not the proper way that we should be moving these vehicles. We should, in fact, actually be using forces and rotation on the wheels themselves to move our vehicle. So if I play my game, take a look at our scene view. So if I play our game and I move the vehicle down the road, it's not really moving, but see that the vehicle's wheels aren't actually turning and rotating, which is what they would actually do in real life. To make this a little bit more accurate, we would then start rotating these wheels and actually using the force of that. For things that might help definitely check out the documentation unity answers and the unity forums to see what center of mass does see what our wheel colliders do and get a better understanding of how you can use it. now it's your turn uh to be honest to be honest we do not really need to um make sense so complicated uh, as far as I, I could say, if we rephrase the Y position, and that could be enough for us. Uh, if we run this kind of game, as you would say, oh, it's just working as uh, as, as as he expected. You know, no problems w would be caused. You say we can even we can even fly on, on the sky. You know, the only problem is uh we probably got too much forces. So let me minus one zero and do this kind of things again. And for now, I can still move this uh, tank without any problem. So sometimes you uh there there is more than one solution for a problem. So for this case, you could just uh, um, do whatever you want as long as it solves the problem. Uh, let's get into the next one. Now that we have the vehicle in a semi-drivable state, let's display the speed on our user. In, in order to do so, we need to add a text mesh pro object to our scene, much like we did with projects before. So in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click in the empty space, go down to UI and go to text dash text mesh pro. So I haven't added text mesh pro to this project before. I'm going to need to import it. Now that it's imported, I can exit out. So now we can see in our scene, we have our vehicle, but we can see the white outlines of the text mesh pro canvas. So I'm actually going to select that canvas and press F. Now it zooms out so I can actually see very far zoomed out. So if we get our canvas in frame here, you can see our little game world here in the corner. And then we have our text mesh pro canvas here. So if I press play, you should see that little new text pop up probably on the bottom right about there. It doesn't look good at all. We're going to have to actually adjust that. So first what we're going to do is with the actual text, we're going to rename this to our speedometer and we want our speedometer to have probably a position in the top left where our player can see how fast they're going. First, I'm actually going to change the anchors to be the top left. And now I'm going to move text over to that corner right about there. And then for the text, I'll just say speed for now. Now if I press play, we should see speed in the top left corner. Cool. So that looks pretty good. I'm not going to change any of the text for now, fonts or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it as is. In this case, since we just want to see our speed working, we're not going to use a game manager script. I'm actually just going to use my player controller. That's where I can actually see the speed that our player is moving at. So in the player controller script, I actually need to create a variable for that text mesh pro text. So in fact, I actually need to import that library first. So at the top of my script, I add a using statement using TM pro. Now I can find the text mesh pro library. I'm going to create another serialized variable game object. This time I actually need the actual text. So I'll get the text mesh pro UGUI, call it speedometer text. Now that I have this variable in unity, I need to make sure that I actually attach this text to the speedometer text. So I'm just going to drag on speedometer and drop it in there. Now we have a reference and I can change the text when I need. Now the question is, how do we actually calculate the speed of our vehicle? Once again, we'll head over to the internet 
and see if anybody has any questions for us. So I looked up calculate vehicle speed and one of the first answers is how to get car speed, like what I'm looking for. Let's see, this person has a car that can move and they want speed. Okay, so here, so for car speed in kilometers per hour is speed. So I guess we need a speed variable again, but to the magnitude, you can actually get the velocity that our rigid body is moving. So that's very helpful. And then in this case, they multiply by point. a pretty good start. So we can actually just use rigidbody.velocity.magnitude and velocity will actually get us the actual velocity, the speed that our vehicle is moving and the magnitude number. So that was pretty helpful. Did notice as I was going through the results that there is another result about a car with wheel colliders. We do have wheel colliders, so let's see what does. Making a simple car driving game. The GUI text, cool. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Speed display doesn't seem very realistic. And has this little formula here. I really got the speed by using, there's that rigid body velocity magnitude again. Oh, so it returns the speed in meters per second. So that's get when you get the speed in kilometers per hour. Oh, so you multiply by 3.6. So that's why the 3.6, you want to get it in miles per hour, multiply by two. Okay. Because when you're going from meter second to kilometers per hour, you have to do a little bit of math to get the proper number of how to convert meters per second to kilometers per hour or miles per hour. So that's calculations using wheel colliders. Okay, cool. That's pretty helpful. So since it said we needed to make a speed variable before, I'm actually going to uncomment out our speed variable. I'm actually going to turn this into a serialized variable as well. So our speed is actually being calculated now. I don't actually need to set it when I start. Now in my update method. Probably want to calculate my speed after I apply that force. So I do speed equals layer rigid body dot velocity dot magnitude. Want to times it by, I think it was 2.7 way. Our program knows that that number is a float for our own sake if we want to change it to kilometers per hour. So kilometers per hour. So now we're getting that actual speed. So now we just need to actually text for our speedometer. So speedometer dot set text string. So we can say that speed and then we concatenate the actual speed calculating. Then just as a nice touch, we'll add another string at the end to say miles. Now if I save this, hopefully now our speed should update in the top left when we play our game. Okay, well that's very weird. Uh, speed is moving very fast. I actually still have my vehicle very heavy. Change that really quick. Thousand, thousand before. Okay, so now we play and we can move down the road and there you go. See, it's changing. There's a lot of numbers after the decimal point. In fact, when we press play, <laughs> it actually starting us a number value falling to the ground. Uh, so that doesn't look right. Also, it's kind of small. We should probably, but this problem, very weird. Just all these decimals. How do we get rid of, well, the decimals happen because the number is a float and to get a round number, we actually need to, we get it. So let's head back over to the internet and see what it has to say. I looked up how to convert float to integer unity. First result that popped up is this math f round to int. So return f float rounded to the near f. So that number we're passing in. Then back f rounded. Sure. Like how you so math f dot round to int. So then you put in the float and then you 10. Okay. Hmm. Math f dot round. Well, let's see if that works on this little formula that we have here. So I'm actually just going to apply this here. Math f dot our number in here now, save. now we should just get whole numbers go zero should probably that text box a little bigger there you go now it's just whole round numbers so that's good so that works great that issue with the size later but that works for a fun little fact you remember a few lessons ago we were talking about different keywords you could use on variables things like const read only and static you can actually see we have a const variable here for our turn speed and this is actually down here where we're calculating our speed case where you can actually see a static flash. actually in fact here as well and so if you remember in cases like our rigid body we have to actually create a variable for that rigid body and then assign it to something but for things like input or for math we don't actually need to instantiate anything to use these classes that's because they're actually static so static allows us to use classes without having to create an instance like player rigid body for a rigid body so what we're gonna do is in prototype one you're going to add a new text mesh pro text to your project by right clicking in the hierarchy, going down to UI, create a text text mesh pro. It'll prompt you if you want to import text mesh pro because we haven't used it in this project yet. Once you import that, just go to your text, rename it speedometer so we know what it's used for. You can even change the placeholder text, reposition it so it's in the top left. And after you've set up your text, go into your player controller script. You're going to add a new line at the top to use the text mesh pro library. You can uncomment out your speed variable and you can actually just make it a serialized field without any value 
assigned to it. You're going to create another variable for the speedometer text itself. And then in your update method, you're going to write two new lines of code, one to set the speed to a rounded value from float to in by calculating the actual velocity that the player is moving. And then you have to multiply it by this 2.237F for the actual miles per hour. So once you've calculated that entire thing, just going to set the speedometer text that it actually tells you what the speed is. After you set that text, just make sure to pop back into Unity on your player object. Make sure you drag that speedometer text down to the speedometer text here in your player controller script. That when you play your game, you should see that the speed starts updating. Now it's your turn. All right. Um, basically, what we are going to do is to just add a text over our screen uh let's limit the speed let's limit to speed ta text okay um after that we probably need to reset the position of it okay here you go <laughs> this is what you get from the uh from the level of the the text kind of things uh first we need to set it to let's say left card uh left top corner then we do a little bit of movement for it. Yeah, after that, uh, let's say we want to change that uh, text to, well, we want to change this text to speed. Yeah, that, that, that could be enough for us. For now, uh, let's go to our script. And for there, I'm going to create a public variable. Oh, before we do that, we want to in using the UI. I was kind of forget about the LAN. Oh, it should be TM Pro right in here, TM Pro. And the name for it, uh, the type of it is uh, Text Mesh Pro UGI. That's, let's say, it's just a speed label, if you ask me. Then it comes to the speed. We need to calculate that kind of speed every time when we, um, no, we probably do not need that. I don't know, let's just, um, try to do it uh, in the right way. So what we can do is to use that uh, rigid body. We want to get the speed of it. So velocity, it's uh, another word for, for the speed. And we want to get the magnitude of that uh, velocity. In other words, we want to get the size of that, uh, of our velocity. And uh, I'm going to time it with uh, 2.237F. In the end, we're gonna send it to the speed. After that, we need to um, set the text for speed label. So set the text here. So it could be equal to speed with that uh, number followed by uh, by that. So speed that to string. Do we have that function? Yes, we have it. All right. I guess that would do it. Let's just um, run this game. Oh my God! I didn't say anything. Was that a problem? Uh, well, it's simply because I didn't drag the speed text uh, component into our, let's say, script. Uh, we should do it right in here. We, we, we should drag it into this uh, slot. Okay, after that, if we run this kind of game, we could see the speed of our car. Uh, the only problem is that, as they, as they said, that we should convert it to an integer. So how can we do that? We should say mass f dot, uh, wait, why can I do that? Do we need to import it first? Start, let's say using mass f that work uh you know what we could use this function it's just like something uh it's it's just something like this run to int it's gonna take the input of speed and uh, same back to speed now if we if we save our script run this game again we should say the speed right in there without any problem as an integer so we have accomplished uh, this feature. Go to the next one. Another cool feature that a lot of car simulators have is a display of the RPM or revolutions per minute. The tricky part is figuring out how to calculate. First, what we need to do is create a new text area for our RPM. So in my canvas, if I left on that little drop down arrow, so we have the speedometer here, I need to right click on canvas and I'll create another UI text mesh pro. Somewhere off and go. So you can see it's in the center of our canvas here and we need to actually move it top left here. I'm actually going to set the anchor first so it's in the top left. The line is that at 
on the Y, X, Y, over, there you go, so it's all lined up, so that looks nice and clean. And here we'll change this to RPM. To avoid that problem we had with the speed before, with wrapping, we're going to able, and now we can get our RPM. Let me make sure that I rename this element be RPM. Now I need to actually create another variable for this. So in my player controller script, right after the speedometer text, I will create a new serialize field text mesh pro new GUI. Call this RPM text. Now I need to make sure that I set the RPM as a reference. So in Unity, if I select my player, I'll drop this RPM text element down into the RPM text. So now we have the RPM text, but we need to actually calculate the RPM. So let's see what we can do. So the internet will be another helpful resource here once again. So here we need to calculate the RPM of our vehicle in Unity. So we have all of these different options. Check out this Unity answers question. Person is making a speed limiter through wheel collider dot The problem is we would have to get a reference to one of our wheel colliders that does one speed no. wheel by it. Alright, alright. Um as I think what is the RPN? I, I probably do not need that. Revolutions per minute. Um no, I, I still do not think that we need uh need the RPN. At least you know for some, some users, even even for me, I, I do not care about this speed. What is that? I don't need that. So probably it's useless to aid aid, aid some 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 information for our users which which our users do not understand why you aided that. That makes sense. Um prevent driving in man air. Um I guess we already probably solved this kind of problem because um you know, uh for now our car could be flying on the sky. <laughs> uh let's say what he did. Okay, I guess probably for the, let's say for the wall clatter, it has a functionality that could be able to detect whether that, that wheel is on ground, ground or not. If it is, it will return true. If it's not, it will return false. And because we have this kind of feature, um, we could do a de detection. For example, if, if some one of the wheel is on the air, then we stop that car. So that car won't fall into the air. I guess since we already know the logic of it, we probably do not need to, you know, implement it ourselves again. That, that makes sense. Um, okay, I guess that's that's today's learning. And uh, let's say I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.